All right. Now, the first gate, actually the second gate, because last lesson we did talk about that little gate called the inverter. But now we're going to talk about some gates that combine signals based on an algorithm to generate a single output. And the gate we're going to talk about is the AND logic gate. Now, the AND logic gate has a very specific algorithm that it follows to generate a single output X based on its inputs. And the algorithm is this, output a logic one only, and in math we do the if and only if, right? So that's, that's what that only means. So output a logic one only if all inputs equal one, equal a logic one. So if I've got four inputs, A, B, C, D, output a logic one only if and only if A is equal to a one and B is equal to a one and C is equal to a one and D is equal to a one, okay? All right, so what does our truth table look like? Well, the truth table I'm going to have three inputs, and by the way, um, this is not, this is lining up more along the lines of the electronics rather than the, you know, any sort of a mathematical function because, you know, the electronics of an AND gate uh, kind of looks like this. Well, if I have, imagine that this is some sort of a push button, okay? I can push down on this switch A in order to create a circuit. I can put a switch B in series with it and a switch C in series with it. Now let's just say I have a logic one on this side and X is on the output. Now, how do I get this logic one to go all the way to the output? Well, pushing just A by itself won't work. Pushing A and B by themselves won't work. The only way that that logic one can get all the way from one side to the other side is if A and B and C, all three of them are pushed at the same time, okay? And so when you think about the electronics, we're not limited by just two inputs to one of these circuits. There can be multiple inputs to this circuit. So A and B and C, all three of them pushed, logic one gets to the other side. So. If I have three inputs, A and B and C, that gives us two to the three or eight possible patterns of ones and zeros, right? Now, what does the output look like? What does X follow whenever, we, you know, when is X equal to a one based on the conditions of these inputs? Well, the only time we're gonna output a one is if the, all the inputs are equal to a one. And so the only case, if we go through all of these, the only case where all three of them are equal to a one is this last case here. One and one and one equals one. Now, all the other cases, every single one of them, these are all zero. And so what we see is that the AND gate has a unique condition in the truth table, a unique condition that outputs a one. Well, in this particular case, the unique condition is when we output a one, all right? Now, we need to do two more things in order to talk about this, this AND gate in future uh, lessons. The first thing is, is when we talked about the inverter, I showed you that there was a circuit schematic, something that we use to represent the operation of the inverter or the NOT gate. The AND gate has one too. Hopefully it's pretty easy to remember because what does the last letter, what is the last letter of our gate name? Well, it's a D. And so when you try and draw an AND gate, just draw a big capital D. Now, if you remember from our discussion about logic gates, all the inputs are going to be coming in from the left-hand side, and a single output is going out the right-hand side. So our single output is X. What do the inputs look like? Well, the way the inputs work is we put all of our inputs on the left side, on this flat vertical side, and you just label them. All right. 
And so if you were to see this as a circuit, you'd see that the A, the B, the C, all of these inputs would be coming in from the left-hand side. They would all have a logic value of zero or a logic one, right? And the only way that this X is going to also be a logic one is if every single one of the inputs also is a logic one. Now, the second thing is, is we want to have some sort of a mathematical a, a, a representation, something, a symbol, a mathematical type symbol in order to represent this operation. And the reason for this is you don't want to have to describe the AND gate operation with the truth table. And sometimes drawing the circuit out is a little cumbersome. So we want to actually be able to write this out as a mathematical expression. Now, a lot of mathematicians would say something along the lines of A equals, excuse me, excuse me, X equals A and B. They use this little caret. The caret is, it is a logic function in a way. What it is is the min function. And if you look at this, the minimum function really does kind of represent the Boolean operation and. Because if you look at any one of these rows, X represents whatever the minimum is of any of the inputs. So for all of these rows above the last row, there is a zero at one of the inputs, at one or more of the inputs, which means since zero is less than one, zero is going to be output. The only time that we output a one is when all of the inputs are a one, hence the minimum value is one. Now, in a lot of electrical engineering type diagrams, which is what we're going to be doing here, instead of using the minimum, we're going to use the product or dot, all right? Now, mathematically, this may not make 100% sense if you think of this as multiplication. Uh, for example, well, zero times zero is zero. Zero times zero is zero, right? Uh, zero times anything is zero. The only time that we get a one output is if we have one times one times one times is equal to one, right? All ones is equal to one. Multiply all the ones together and equal to one. Now, the reason why I'm going to f use this is because later on in future lessons, we are going to talk about something called a sum of products expression or a product of sums expression. And that more aligns with this dot or the product. Just, just the language we're using, it makes more sense. In addition, in a future lesson, we're going to talk about some algorithms that we're going to be using to simplify these expressions, such as the distributive prop property. Um, or any of you know FOIL, right? First, outside, inside, last, the ability to, to do quadratic expressions. There's a similar kind of operation whenever it comes to Boolean logic. So we're going to go ahead and stick with this dot, using the dot to represent an and. So this guy up here, what is this equal to? Well, this x up here is equal to a dot b dot c, okay? So we have a way of representing this truth table. Another thing that we're going to talk about a little bit later is this thing, idea of order of precedence, uh, which operations get done first. And it turns out that mathematically, the dot, it links well with the symbol that we're going to be using to represent the or, which is our next lesson.